A new documentary explores the dangerous world of cyber weapons. Zero Days follows the path of Stuxnet, an unprecedented computer virus. It spread from a nuclear facility in Iran to machines around the world. The documentary traces Stuxnet's origins back to its alleged creation by the United States and Israel. The virus is one example of emerging cyber weaponry. Zero Days raises important questions about this new frontier in warfare. This has the whiff of August 1945. Somebody just used a new weapon. And this weapon will not be put back into the box. I, I know uh, no operational details and don't know what anyone did or didn't do before someone decided to use the weapon, mm -hmm. all right? I do know this. If we go out and do something, most of the rest of the world now thinks that's a new standard and it's something that they now feel legitimated to do as well. Zero Days, Director Alex Gibney is with us. Good morning. Good morning. This is so fascinating, but just so everybody understands, explain what Stuxnet is. Stuxnet is a, essentially a computer virus that uh, the U.S. and Israel launched on the plant in Natanz, Iran, where uh, they were spinning nuclear centrifuges, and it basically took over those centrifuges and caused a bunch of them to blow up. That's where they were enriching uranium. So in that, in that instance, we were the, on the offense in terms of cyber warfare. Recently, it seems like we're on the defense. Correct. But I think one of the things that's going back and forth, particularly with all of this discussion about Russia and whether or not they're interfering with our electoral system, the point is there's a lot of back and forth between nation states right now. And some of it is secret. Some of it we know about. Some of it we don't know about. And it's also very hard to attribute. So there's a lot of things going back and forth all the time that we do, really don't know or, or are aware of. There's so much secrecy, Alex. This is what fascinated me about this documentary, because it started off with people saying, I can't tell you, I don't want to talk to you. No, I know, but I can't tell you. That's right. And I thought, how is he going to get a documentary out of this? How did you get people <laughs> to talk, and how did you do it? You, because you use very unusual methods to get this done. Well, I, I had in the film one anonymous source um, who's a kind of a composite character. We were able to speak to a number of people inside the NSA uh, who did speak to us um, without their identity being divulged. In order to get that to happen, we had to do it very much old school. You know, we would record uh, conversations with them. We would type them on a typewriter, mm -hmm. never a computer. We'd then, you know, throw away the tape recordings. And then we created a kind of composite character that was computer generated in order to be able to mask everybody's identity. Mm -hmm. What did you learn? I learned that the scary part of this is precisely what you s spoke about a second ago, which is so much is secret, so much is going on, that unless we're able to pierce this veil of secrecy, we're, as citizens, completely in the dark. There's a, a tremendous amount of danger to our lives because we're the most interconnected society really on Earth, uh, and yet our leaders aren't really telling us what's going on in the broadest possible sense, and that is really a problem. But it's also interesting because Cyber Command and NSA are the same person. Correct. You know, and and there was a lot of arguments to separate them, and it is said that the president might consider that. Well, NSA used to be an agency that was entirely designed to receive information, code-breaking in effect, but now they're, they're weaponizing it. Have there been attacks that have been rebuffed against the United States in terms of our electric grid? and in terms of our financial grid? If there are, I don't know about them. I mean, we know that Iran did attack, you know, some of our financial companies in and, retaliation and, to Stuxnet. And were prosecuted for it. Yes, they were. <laughs> that was an interesting moment because, of course, that left open the question as to whether or not Iran should be prosecuting <clears throat> our officials for what they did with Stuxnet. Yeah. That's a, there's no international law on this issue. Well, we had to have inside help on Stuxnet, didn't we? We did. We had to have somebody take a... Hard drive, right? Initially, in. initially, we think that um, an agent took it into Stuxnet, but over time, they'd, part of what they developed with the Stuxnet virus was the ability for the virus to spread on its own. So they actually spread it into Natanz through IT companies surrounding the plant, and that's how ultimately it got out when Israel changed the code. That's Stuxnet now may be sort of the most famous and most dangerous virus that we've employed that we know about. What is Nitro Zeus? Nitro Zeus is something that we discovered uh, from our confidential sources, which is a much bigger program. So it shows you Stuxnet happened in, say, 2010. Nitro Zeus is much more recent. It's a, a, a virus or a, a, a series of viruses that literally take control almost of the entire critical infrastructure of Iran, basically a program to shut down an entire country. 
How I was went, General Cartwright involved in this? General Cartwright recently... The man who was deputy chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Yes. We believe that General Cartwright uh, was very much in charge of the... Um, uh, of the planning of this operation. He recently pled guilty to lying to the FBI over a leak investigation. There was a huge leak investigation over this Stuxnet issue. And uh, from what we can gather, General Cartwright was answering questions from reporters as to whether or not their reporting was accurate. And he's been put in, he's pled guilty to lying to the FBI. You believe that World War III will be cyber warfare? I think World War III could be cyber warfare. It's important to understand that cyber very often is used in conjunction with conventional warfare, so it's not always cyber on its own. Well, Leon Panetta said the next Pearl Harbor will probably be cyber. I think that's correct. And, and I think the dangerous part of it is that cyber is terribly hard to attribute. Unlike a bomber, you know basically where the plane has come from and where the bomb, you know, who's dropping the bombs. In cyber, it's very hard to know who is attacking when Including and why. Including people on your own team, don't Correct. Yeah. And that's what happened on this one. Yeah. We had the Department of Homeland Security who were terrified yeah. over an attack they thought was coming from afar. And in there. fact, it was just down the street. Yeah, right next door. So fascinating. Fascinating, but very scary. Very well Alex. done, Alex. Thank you. Once again, thank you very much.